Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, The Halo Builder. Today I am doing a tutorial on ice mining. Uh, this tutorial has been in the planning for quite a while now, and I'm finally bringing it to you. Uh, before I start, please make sure to subscribe and like this video, as I am hoping to get to 400 subscribers by the end of November. So let's make that happen. So what is ice mining a quick overview uh by the way i am in the uss jupiter as i have now named my retriever the uss jupiter was a coaling ship which um is a ship that brings or transports coal uh that was uh, transformed into one of the u.s's first aircraft carriers it was also the sister ship of the USS Cyclops, which is, which sunk and has a whole bunch of like dark docks videos on it, so um, just a little lore, I guess, for my retriever. So I am currently in an ice belt and I am mining this uh, giant piece of ice floating in here, and I am protected by two Vespa drones. Uh, this is the same fit as used in my mining barges video. Uh, almost with the exception that I added a ice mining booster which I'll show you later and um, capacitor boosters with which I'll show you later um, so a quick overview of ice harvesting so ice harvesting is the process of obtaining resources from ice fields which are commonly known as ice belts this mined ice can be refined and used for uh, or use two fuel capital jump drives, manufacture fuel for player-owned star bases and structure services, and light sinusoidal fields. So basically, if you have a station, like a engineering complex or a refinery, all the things you do come from ice. Uh, all the things that power it come from ice that is refined into fuel. So ice harvesting requires specialized modules or drones, so that would be the ice mining lasers or like the ice mining strip miners, and there are ice mining drones. The reason I didn't bring them today is because they are 50 cubic meters a piece, so they take up a lot of space and I wanted self-protection, and I'll get into that later again. Um, and so all of these are generally fitted to the same ships used in regular mining so mining barges exhumers which are tech 2 mining barges expedition frigates industrial command ships the roar coal which is the capital industrial ship so unlike ore mining tools ice harvesting tools always harvest one block of ice with a volume of 1000 meters cubed per cycle and because of this the best method of harvesting ice more efficiently is to decrease the ice harvester's cycle times by training your skills up or putting on different modules so some advantages to ice mining are reduced attention by the miner when compared with ore mining you don't have to pay as close attention because you are safer uh, less npcs uh, you have the ability to be self-sufficient for pos fuel it is easier to mine without a dedicated hauler because the longer cycle times uh, means you have to travel less to the station. And you get the fun factor of the four hourly ice rush when the belts spawn and tons of miners come in. I have luckily found an entire ice belt to myself. Uh, and so some disadvantages are that there is actually a reduced ISK yield when compared to ore mining. Uh, while ice commands a higher price, so it costs more on the market, it's not possible to mine ice continuously because it responds every four hours. So, ice belts. Ice belts can be found in every region of New Eden, but only in specific systems. You have to go to the agency, resource uh, harvesting, and ice belts to find them. And each system contains one to three ice belts in the ones that do. Ice belts disappear once mined out, and then they respawn six hours later. This timer does not work across downtime. Uh, there is always an ice belt after downtime. This new one, or the leftovers of a finished one before the downtime. Uh, also, unlike asteroid belts, 
Ice belts are a type of cosmic anomaly, meaning that they will appear in a different location of the star systems every time they respawn, so they spawn at random, and they can be found using these ships onboard scanner, though they do not require scan probes to find, or, like I will show you, all you do, go into the agency and click warp 2. Uh, like regular asteroid belts, hostile NPCs sometimes spawn in ice belts, however, they spawn in 20 minute waves, which gives you a bit more time of relaxation, and if you have two drones like me guarding you, you can just completely walk away from your computer and you'll be fine. So there are ice variants, as to be expected in a game as complex as EVE Online. So as with or asteroids, so in the normal asteroids you mine, uh, each ice asteroid contains one type of ice. So uh, for instance, an asteroid called Blue Ice Asteroid will contain nothing but blue ice. That makes sense. Uh, there are 12 different types of ice asteroids split into three categories. There are faction asteroids, enriched faction asteroids, and standard asteroids. The ice from faction asteroids, which contain clear icicle, glacial mass, blue ice, or white glaze, refined to small quantities of heavy water, liquid ozone, and strontium clathrates, but large amounts of their respective faction's isotope, helium isotopes, hydrogen isotopes, oxygen isotopes, and nitrogen isotopes. Okay, so it looks like the pirates have finally spawned in, so you know what we do. We go out of control of 9 mode. We go to general. Oh, it's only one person. And look. My drones are really fighting him. I guess we'll click this guy for one second. See, this is the beauty of having drones, because they will automatically fight for you. So I can continue talking to you about what is ice mining, and not have to worry about this Garista Saboteur. Uh, and this is binded to my F3, so I'll just turn that off. And back to Control F9 mode. If you do not know, Control F9 gets rid of the UI. So let me reread that. Uh, so, all the faction asteroids con contain, which which are, clear icicle, glacial mass, blue ice, or white glaze, refined to small quantities of heavy water, liquid ozone, and strontium clathrates, but large amounts of their faction's isotopes, uh, so they will also refine into large amounts of helium isotopes, hydrogen isotopes, oxygen isotopes, and nitrogen isotopes. So basically, they will refine in into like 20% well these numbers are incorrect but just to visualize it 20% heavy water and then 80% helium isotopes just for you to visualize it um, and then moving on each of these asteroid types is only found in the regions of space which are controlled by their respective faction so for instance blue asteroids only spawn in Galante space and, ref and to refine uh, or they refine to Oxygen isotopes, which are used to fuel jump drives on Galante ships and to manufacture fuel for Galante pauses, uh, and that's like mini or player place stargates. So ice from enriched faction asteroids, um, which which have in their ranks enriched clear icicle, smooth glacial mass, thick blue ice, or pristine white glaze. So they all work the same way as the regular faction asteroids, but they contain more of the same materials, so they refine for higher. And where was I? Uh, these asteroids are only found in Nullsec, so the dangerous part of space, in systems that are controlled by their factions, so technically have control, but actually have no control, or in shattered ice fields of the shattered wormhole systems, uh, which we will get into later, um, or we can get into now. And so a shattered wormhole system, for those of you who don't know, um, are systems where all the planets are shattered. Sha so basically all the planets have been blown up. There you go. That's all you need to know. So the ice from standard asteroids, which contain in their ranks the glare crust, dark glitter, uh, geldius, and crystallus, contain large quantities of heavy water, liquid ozone, and strontium clathrates, and they have no faction isotopes, so they are the worst ones to mine. Uh, these asteroids are only found in low sec and null sec, or in the shattered ice fields of shattered wormhole systems, which we just talked about. So, assuming you guys um, have trained up your single refining skill, 
which I think might not be accurate anymore because they changed the mining. I'm pretty sure there is still a single mining skill, but uh, if you have trained that refining skill up, uh, there will be zero waste when you refine. So I will have an overlay of this on screen, um, which I'm going to be talking about this chart. So f I'm going to start with the faction. There's clear icicle, white glaze, blue ice, and glacial mass. Uh, for all of them, they have 69 heavy water, 35 or refined two, um, 69 heavy water, 35 liquid ozone, and one strontium cal calthrates. Um, and then the faction that gets another isotope is helium isotopes, and that is Amar. So that's clear icicle. Uh, blue glaze, or blue glaze, white, white glaze has nitrogen isotopes, and that is Caldari. Blue ice is the Galante one, and it refines to oxygen isotopes. And glacial mass is the Minmatar one, which refines to hydrogen isotopes. Now, the enriched ones, which are the medium quality, uh, they, the enriched, all of them refine to 104 heavy water, 55 liquid ozone, and 1 strontium uh, clathrates. I lied, these are the ones that you want to mine, actually. Uh, and so, enriched clear icicle is the Amar uh, ice, which, and it refines to he 483 helium isotopes. The pristine white glaze is Caldari's ice, and it refines to eight, 483 nitrogen isotopes. Thick blue ice is Galante's ice, and it refines to 483 oxygen isotopes. Let me just turn the camera a bit here so you guys get a new view. Uh, and smooth glacial mass is Minimitar's ice, and it refines to 483 hydrogen isotopes. As you can see, they all refine to the same amount, 483, of their faction's isotope, except it refines to a different isotope, depending on which faction asteroid you get. And so, a final one, which is standard, which doesn't have any faction isotopes inside of it, has, which is glare crust, which has 1,381 heavy water, and 691 liquid ozone and 35 strontium clathrates. Dark glitter has 691 heavy water, 1,381 liquid ozone, and 69 strontium clathrates. Uh, Geldius has 345 heavy water, 691 liquid ozone, and 104 strontium clathrates. And Crystallos has 173 heavy water, 691 liquid ozone, and 173 strontium clathrates, and no faction isotopes for all the standard ices. All the numbers I just listed to remind you are the amounts of what they refine to. So if you were to click refine, that's how much you would get for each one, out of each one. So to summarize, like asteroid ore, unrefined ice takes up a large amount of space and can therefore be time consuming to transport. So, the best sub-capital ship for transporting ice and ore is the Miasmos, the Galante uh, hauler, which can transport up to 63,000 cubic meters. 63 blocks, uh, or two loads of the Mackinac uh, of ice. So, it can transport 63 blocks of ice. And the Kairos, which is the other Galante hauler, which can... Uh, which got a dedicated ice hold with a maximum of 45,000 cubic meters in the 2021 update. So if you need to haul even larger quantities, it may be worth flying a freighter for this uh, because they can hold over 10 times as much as the normal haulers or, a sh or to ship the ice by courier contract. So just tell someone, hey, I will pay you if you bring this over there. So ice can also be compressed in upwell structures, which is recommended for transport, uh, with the active stand-up reprocessing facilities. Those of you with stations out there, this is what you need to do to compress ice. Put in standard reprocessing facilities. I know because I have a refinery. Uh, or by a roar coal with an active industrial core. So compressed ice takes up only 100 cubic meters. That's 
10 times less than its non-compressed variant per block. And light compressed or compressing ice does not change its reprocessing yield. So when you want to transport ice, compress it, guys. If you don't compress the ice, you're going to have to, you're going to run into a lot of pain when transporting this. Just compress the ice and then you're good. You can bring a lot more of it in a lot in a, in a shorter amount of time. So now I'm going to overlay the ice distribution chart. So like asteroids and ore, different types of ice can spawn based on racial quarters of space. So faction ice, both normal and the enriched kind, will spawn only in that faction's quarter. As with asteroids, more valuable ice spawns at lower security ratings, and each system can spawn all ice types of higher security systems in that same quarter. So basically, the lower you get, the better the ice, but also the higher chance of getting blown up. And the lower you get, it can still spawn in the higher tiers. So at 1.0 or lower, uh, so 1.0 to uh, 0.05, you get clear icicle for Amar, white glaze for Keldari, blue ice for Gilante, and glacial mass for Minmatar. 0.4 and lower, you get glare crust for Amar, glare crust for Kaldari, glare crust for Galante, and glare crust for Mimitar. They all have the same thing, as well as they can spawn in all the 1.0 ices as well. At 0 0.1 and lower, you can spawn in dark glitter for Amar, Dark Glitter for Kaldari, Dark Glitter for Galante, and Dark Glitter for Minmatar. Again, the same things. When you're at 0.0 or lower, so when you're in the worst parts of space, for Amar, you can spawn in Gelidus, Crystallos, and Enriched Clear Icicle, and for Kaldari, the same, Galante, the same, and Minmatar, the same. So basically, the only things that are different is 1.0 or lower. That will change... So there are also uh, there are also specific ice belts in high and low security space. So a clear icicle belt, white glaze belt, blue ice belt, and glacial mass belt, um, which means that all the asteroids and or all the ice chunks in those belts will be of one. And I'm actually one of those because all the asteroids here are of white glaze. All right. And so there are specific ice belts also in null security space. So in null security space, they will spawn in enriched clear icicle uh, belts, pristine white glaze belt, thick blue ice belt, smooth glacial mass belt. So these are the same thing. They just have all the same. So the enriched, gla enriched clear icicle belt will only have enriched clear icicles hanging around in the loneliness of space. Uh, so there are also... Moving on to ice harvesting mechanics, ice, harve uh, ice mining works in the same way as ore mining, so you equip a ship with ice mining modules, approach and target an ice asteroid, and activate the mining module. I assume you guys all know how to do this, I assume you all have mined, if you haven't, watch my beginner tutorial for a bench, uh, I have two beginner tutorials, I have um, one for a venture, which fit to use, and then I have a video on how to use that venture in mining, and both of those are going to be uh, in the description and cards on screen. So, at the end of each cycle, one unit of ice, so one block of ice, will be deposited into your ship's cargo or ore hold, and despite of its name, the ore hold can hold ice too. However, unlike ore mining, ice mining modules can only be fitted on Mining barges and exhumers, tech 2 mining barges, and asteroid mining drones cannot be used. You have to get the special 50 cubic meter ice mining drones, which I did not bring with me because they're too big. So specialized ice harvesting drones might be used, uh, and they you can use them, and they come in tier 1, tier 2, augmented, and excavator flavors, and they also use their own skills which include the ice harvesting drone operation and the ice harvesting drone specialization. For the skills that you have to train, so the core skill for ice mining is the appropriately named ice harvesting skill, 
which reduces the cycle of time, uh, which reduces the cycle time of the ice mining modules by five percent per level. So if you train this skill to level five, so you have to train the skill to level five to use the tech to ice miner. Mining upgrade skill is needed to install a mining up install mining upgrade modules, which will further decrease the cycle time of the ice miners. And lastly, the mining barge skill and slash or exhumer skills are needed to fly the mining ships. Uh, the higher you train their skills, the lower their cycle time or the faster their cycle time will be for the ice modules. And you will probably train some fitting skills to take full advantage of other things such as um, shields and capacitor boosters. Again, use all the mining barges, tech 2 mining barges, and tech 2 frigates to mine with these. So you can also use, um, going into which ships you can use, you can use expedition frigates such as the Prospect and Endurance. They can both fit ice mining lasers, but the Endurance has bonuses that reduce the cycle duration. They are much more maneuverable and can fit cloaking devices, making them well suited for the dangers of wormhole space or for the brave ones of you out there, the point O space. I have to bring the water back because I'm still coughing. So all three mining barges, the Procurer, Retriever, and the Coveter. The USS Jupiter right over here is a Retriever, if you didn't know. So all of them have a 2% reduction in ice harvester duration per level of mining barge skill. Uh, as with standard mining, each hull is suited for a different style of mining, but none have any particular focus in harvesting ice resources, so none of them are ice-oriented, like the Endurance. So, for example, the Coveter has an extra roll bonus to ice mining yield, 25% reduction in cycle time and activation cost, and a 5% bonus to range, the only one with such a bonus among the three barges, but, however, it, it has a fairly small overhold of 7,000 meters, which means you can only hold 7 cubes of ice. And it will fare up, fill up fairly quickly. Uh, the Procurer and Retriever both have a 2% bonus, and um, the same ice mining yield. And each ship has a different strength. The Retriever has a very, very large overhold, and the Procurer has a very tough tank. Um, which I substitute on my retriever with the modules I'm going to show to you later. So while all the barges uh, now use two ice harvesters, like I am now, you see these two lasers. Uh, they use two ice harvesters. The Procurer only has two low slots, and the Coveter and Retriever each have three low slots uh, for an additional ice harvester upgrade. And um, when using these ships for ore mining, the choice depends on your playstyle. Uh, if you're unsure of what barge you want to pick, up here is a card on for my video on what on how to pick the right mining barge for you. So exhumers are the Tech Two mining barges. Exhumers are straight upgrades of their mining barge counterparts and the same reflections hold true for them. One small difference is that both the Skiff and the Mackinac get a smaller 2% reduction to ice harvester cycle time per level of exhumers and the Hulk gets a 3% reduction per skill level. The Skiff gets uh, an additional low slot giving all three exhumers uh, three low slots unlike the barge counterpart the Procure which um, does not get a third low slot. Industrial Command uh, and Capital Industrial Ships. So with the release of a new update, the um, Orca, Roracle, and the newly introduced Porpoise, which is not any more newly introduced, I wrote the script a little bit a while ago, uh, have bonuses to ice harvesting drone cycle time. Uh, as a result, these ships have become viable ice harvesting platforms post a session and of course uh, the orca and roracle were nerfed in the mining update which caused um, a giant protest but 
we don't talk about that. Uh, so the drones. So the these are the drones. I'm gonna be hating on them right now. Uh, ice harvesting drones. They do exist, uh, and are in fact the only way for the porpoise, orca, and roracle to harvest ice because they can't fit ice harvesting lasers. So, however, uh, these ice harvesting drones use up considerably more bandwidth uh, and drone base space than their ore mining counterparts. So it's 50 megabits versus 5 megabits. So most ships can only field a single drone of this type. And the Rorco with a maximum amount of bandwidth, uh, 125 megabits per second, can only utilize two at a time. So guys, they're not worth your money. They take up too much space and they cost too much uh, bandwidth. So don't do it. Don't sacrifice your protection get the protection drones so if you want to improve your yield um, so in con in contrast with ore mining uh, all ice mining modules mine exactly one unit 1,000 cubic meters per ice so therefore the only way to increase your mining efficiency is to decrease your modules cycle time as mentioned before this can be done by training skills which I have mentioned previously in the video uh, installing more advanced ice mining and mining upgrade modules, fitting ice harvester acceleration accelerator rigs, and flying more advanced ships, exhumers instead of mining barges, or using implants, the IH-100X uh, Inherito Implants Yeti Ice Harvesting Series. Um, so additionally, if you're on a fleet, you receive further bonuses through fleet boosts, uh, and while each boost may seem small, when added together, they make a big difference. So ice mining often turns into a race with large numbers of miners competing to mine as, as much ice before the belt is emptied. Having short cycle times can be an advantage beyond simply mining more ice in a given period of time. This allows you to beat your competition to those last few pieces of ice in, in a belt Um, so as if two miners are attempting to mine the same asteroid with only one unit of ice left, whoever finishes the cycle first is the one who gets the block of ice. And then the other one gets nothing. So using a survey scanner can be very helpful as you can see how much ice is left in each asteroid. So and finally, not finally, tactics. Uh, because of the popularity of systems that contain ice anomalies they have become targets of regular and perpetual ganking activities so people want to blow you up uh, the following tactics may be useful for you guys uh, to protect yourself from ice miners so once you warp into a site start your ship um, moving away from the warp point this is where gankers are likely to appear use bookmarks to your advantage sensible use of safe spots can make ice mining much safer Make sure you are always moving. Gankers may be tempted by still ships, uh, which may be an indication that the pilot is not at their keyboard. I mean, I'm at my keyboard, so I'm okay. Try to be aligned to your safe spot at all times. Provided that you are moving at 75% of your maximum speed, you will be able to warp off almost immediately if a ganker appears. If you know the names, or corporations of local gankers set them as terrible standing in your contacts list this will ensure that once you warp into a system you will know who is bad there is a tremendous amount of systems in which these belts can spawn it appears that the next wave of girls has appeared I'm not even gonna pay attention to these guys because my drills will take care of it I am however going to turn on my shield booster, or my shield um, hardener so now that we have successfully defeated the pirates that attacked me once again and all died. I am now going to go over my fit for the USS Jupiter. And I highly recommend it for all of you because it is a very good fit. And that's the wrong button. Never mind, it's not the wrong button. There we go. So. I have fitted my USS Jupiter which is a Tech 1 Retriever, with two Ice Harvester 1s, a Multi-Spectrum Shield Hardener 2, a Capacitor Power Relay 2, 
and a medium ice harvester accelerator one so it's a very simple fit um it doesn't cost a lot don't pay attention to this price um it's gonna cost you under 60 mil which is i feel a very good price and then in my drone bay so if we open our inventory and then we go into drone bay which is nothing because they're flying right now of course i'm so stupid um i have two kaldari navy vespas which as you can see once they are in orbit around me they will always protect me, even if I am in control F9 mode, without me having to lock target and tell them to attack it. Which is why I highly recommend choosing combat drones over the ice mining drones. Because first of all, we all probably have combat mining or combat drone skills trained. Uh, and we don't want to spend extra time or waste extra time on training the ice mining drones. So just get the combat drones, they'll protect you, and, I mean, that's it. So, F1, and, and, this is very important, when you undock, make sure you put all three of your modules that are visible, or like all three modules that are, can be activated, up here, in your top row. So that way, they are all activated by the keypads F1, F2, and F3. So... Without, let's say you're, like, you have on your second monitor, you're watching YouTube or something. You see, oh, I have manned out this entire asteroid, what do I do? You just switch over to your next target, click up here, F1, F2, you're done. Oh, you're getting attacked by random pirates that showed up? Boom, click F3. You can even do it like me in creator mode, or content creator mode. Uh, you need to turn your mining lasers on and off. F1, F2. There we go. I have a full mining hold now. You need to turn on your shield because some people are coming. Look, F3. Boom. It's on now. There we go. If you saw that little effect, you know that it's on. And F3 to turn it back off. Very, very convenient. Very, very simple to use. Uh, make sure you're always in um, 0.5 or higher with this VIC because it will not tolerate... Um, anything lower than that I know because I went and tested it out on the test server but other than that um, I hope you guys hoped you guys enjoyed this video um, let me check how long it's been recording for okay 39 minutes this is another very long one so 39 minutes I've been recording for uh, by the end my voice gave out a bit and I started coughing, so if there are a bunch of silent parts, um, a bunch of silent parts where I just like silent for no, no reason and repeat myself, like just now, it's either I muted my mic to cough or took a sip of my water um, to make sure I got through the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I spent a really long time preparing for it. Two weeks ago, I knew nothing about ice mining, so I read up on it, did a ton of research, and I hope this was helpful for you. I, I mean, I think there was a lot of helpful materials in there. I think it made it really easy to understand. Uh, if you liked the video, please subscribe uh, to my channel. Again, I am promoting myself because I want to get to 400. But other than that, uh, hope you liked the video and have a great rest of your day.